But on a rainy Florida Sunday, Miami quickly discharged San Diego's dreams for the big party. San Diego quarterback Stan Humphreys uncharacteristically threw four interceptions, admitting later it was his worst NFL game. Miami's Marino characteristically threw for three touchdowns. Final score, Dolphins 31, Chargers nothing. Neither made it to the Super Bowl that year, but both teams looked like they had become better for the experience. Both would return solid playoff contenders behind talented quarterbacks. Then last season, injuries robbed both teams of their quarterbacks, their dreams. Marino's was severe enough to turn him into a spectator. Humphreys bad enough to shorten his performance. The year that began so optimistically finished with both teams disappointingly out of the playoffs. But this year, Marino and Humphreys guided their teams to division titles, leading with their arms and their hearts. The depth of their talent stretched by their courage, their refusal to acknowledge pain. Who could forget Marino still struggling with the ache of his Achilles, leading his team back against the Jets. Down 10 points, fourth quarter, engineering two touchdown drives. The final one with just seconds left, ingeniously deceiving the defense that he was going to throw the ball away only to turn and deliver the winning touchdown pass. While that was the most celebrated of Marino's heroics, there were three other times when he led Miami from behind to win. All the time, pushing his teammates, exhorting them to perform at a higher level, exposing his raw emotion, his desperate desire to win. For San Diego, Stan Humphreys, his show of leadership has been no less dramatic. Earlier this year against the Raiders, Humphreys took a terrible beating, leaving him withering in pain. Team doctors advised him not to return, but with so much on the line, Stan the man hobbled back. Humphreys' heroics positioned the Chargers for a game-winning field goal. And as Stan limped off the field, there was no doubt as to his desire, his drive, to return to the playoffs. Both men are back to where they were two years ago. Quarterbacks of playoff teams, only two wins from the Super Bowl. Both have a better understanding that opportunities are rare and that on any play their season, their career can end. As both men take the field today, they carry with them the memories of their pain, their struggles, and their optimism that they will be the one to advance. A blessed break in the Pacific storms that have struck Southern California this week. Sunny and in the 60s, with over 60,000 at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium to see the champions of the AFC East Miami against the best of the AFC West San Diego. San Francisco, Dallas, and Pittsburgh are convincingly in the final four. Either the Dolphins or the Chargers will fill the semis. It should be a battle of top guns and aerial attack, and appropriately, the Navy F-14s from nearby Miramar Naval Air Base with a flyover salute. Now it's up to Marino. It's up to Humphreys. It's up to these two teams who have had to wait longest of all. You can bet that they are really biting at the Bit. Yeah, that's the worst part about this, Dick. This is where you want to be, but waiting until that kickoff, get the butterflies out of you, it's it just numbs you. <laughs> well, these two quarterbacks both feel very confident. They finished the season on a high note. Marino in the last four games did not uh, throw an interception. And Dick, there are times when Dan Marino just plays in a zone, like Michael Jordan used to play basketball. You can't stop him no matter what defense you draw up. And you can't minimize Marino's pain this year. In fact, he's talking about an operation on that Achilles. More on that later. Stan Humphreys, too, in the last two and a half games, five touchdowns, one intercept. And Dick, he's another tough guy. He can take the heat. He can take the hits. The team has rallied around his injuries. He's made them a lot better football team. Well, there's so much to consider here. Uh, what do you think the key is? Well, I, I like to look at the defensive side of the ball and the two linebackers, the two middle linebackers in today's game, Junior Seau 
and Brian Cox are two of the best. They both move from outside linebacker to inside linebacker. They're both very hard to block. They both run all over the football field. They're both off the field, very quiet, but on the field, they're maniacs. And I also have a feeling that when these guys meet and talk in the Pro Bowl, they'll become great friends because they're both cut from the same cloth, Dick. Well, you can look in their eyes yes. and you see the spirit, the tempo of this game. And joining us down on the field here in San Diego is John Dockery. Thank you, Dick. I spoke to both coaches moments ago. Bobby Ross talked about his offensive line being the key, able to run the ball, keep the ball away from Marino. John Shula talked about intangibles, about momentum, about magic, and playing, continuing to play as well as they played last week against Kansas City. Should be a great game, Dick. Back to you. All right, Doc, great to have you with us, and we're set to go. Boss Ross against the immortal Don Shula. Irving Spikes, number 40. O.J. McDuffie deep. John Carney gets it underway. Short toward the sidelines. McDuffie from Penn State, ridden out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. Here comes Dan Marino and the Miami offense. And they are built around strength on the left side. Webb and Sims are pro bowlers. With him in the backfield, Dan Marino. And it's been a rebuilt backfield with injuries this year. Saxon and Parmalee, the leading rusher. Fryer, McDuffie outside with all-pro Keith Jackson, a tight end. When they go to three wide, Aaron Craver signed when uh, Keith Byers went down and Scott Miller for the injured Mark Ingram will enter the contest. Spotted at the 34, Marino's first snap. And he comes out throwing down the middle to Jackson to the 40 and to the San Diego 36-yard line before Stanley Richard can make the tackle. Marino right on the money, threading that one through San Diego traffic. Great play action figure by Dan Marino. Jackson releases outside of Mims, 94. Gets right by the linebacker, Gibson, and he's wide open. I mean, it's... One of the things you know about San Diego's defense, Dick, is there's lots of zone. If you can hold linebackers, you're going to find receivers open deep down the middle. Marino, a first down at the charge of 35. Parmalee and Spikes behind him. Jackson in motion. He throws again. Under pressure. Goes deep. Picked off by Darren. No, Darren Carrington. He trapped the ball. Stanley Richard. The safety coming in from the left side, blitzing Marino. That's an early indication that Armsbarger, the defensive coordinator of San Diego, is going to pull out some stops. Here's the blitz. Most people say when you play Dan Marino, you've got to get pressure in his face. They try. Stanley Richard is right there, but Marino with that release is still able to get the ball off. This should have been intercepted. Oh, I mean, that's in games like this, that's an opportunity you have to make. You've got to catch that interception. This is significant. Top of the screen, he beats Ron Heller. Mims does, who last week, Ron Heller shut out Neil Smith. No tackles, no sacks. Give Mims a sack on that play. He had 11 during the regular season. He's in his third year from Tennessee. O'Neill led the Chargers with 12 and a half. So they can put pressure from either corner. Mims and O'Neill, third and 10. into this crowd. Dick, one of the things that Dan Marino told us is you've got to have confidence in your pass protection. Well, here, Mims, straight outside move on Ron Heller. He's got a bad left shoulder, but Mims comes inside. There's also pressure from Ray Lee Johnson on the outside. So comes uh, John Kidd, the former Charger putter. Side at midseason, and he lost a high one. Gordon lets it go, and it kicks 
A San Diego bounce into the end zone. When we come back, it'll be Stan Humphrey's turn. San Diego's ball after holding Miami. William Stanley Humphreys has this offensive line. Watch 320 pound rookie Isaac Davis. He'll be blocking Bowens in the back field with Humphreys. Natron Means leading a rusher for the Chargers, fourth in the NFL. Jefferson and Say, the outsiders. Young and Papuno in the double tight end. They use a lot of wham blocking. Ronnie Harmon could be the key in this game. He comes in in the San Diego pocket. See a great receiver tied for the team lead. Tony Martin, a former Dolphin, also will come in. There's Harmon, played at Iowa, and he has caught in the last uh, three years 210 passes, most of any NFL running back. They start with the means and Papunu in the backfield, and Humphreys to throw. He goes long. It's Sean Jefferson off his fingertips. It appeared he was out of bounds anyway. Roy Vincent on the coverage. So both teams come out stretching the defense with a long pass on the first play. Yeah, trying to leave a message for the other team. No, no, no. Natron means we run the ball a lot, but we can throw it too. You can't cheat those defensive backs up. Humphrey said, oh, man. We practiced that all week. All week long, I made that completion. Ronnie Harmon comes in. They spread it this time. And then give the means. Caught by the shirt tail and dropped for a four-yard loss. Marco Coleman, who played for Bobby Ross when they won the national championship at Georgia Tech. It's Cross Bowens, Klingbeil, and Coleman on the front four for the Dolphins. Their linebackers, Aubrey Beavers, a rookie, and then Jesse Solomon actually would be third on the list because Chris Singleton and Dwight Hollyer are injured. Vincent and Brown at the corners, and Stewart and Atkins, the safeties. Means out. Harmon in the backfield, third and 13. Tim Bowens out in pass situations for Miami. Humphreys incomplete. Good coverage by Tyrone Braxton, the former Denver Bronco, in as an extra defensive back to deny Ronnie Harmon. Uh, Dick, watch Brian Cox here. This is a four-man rush, a 4-7 defense by Miami. And Brian Cox, although not as big as most pass rushers, great speed, has that good second move, put a lot of pressure on Stan Humphreys. Oh, Miami's defense has the answer to San Diego. Three and out, and Brian Wagner from Cal State Northridge, the punter. He sends out a beauty. McDuffie inside the 35. And knocked out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Marino will have good field position after that 51-yard punt. Dolphins and the Chargers. Winner goes to Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh, the hometown of Dan Marino for the AFC Championship a week from today. Marino from his own 46. James Saxon in motion in the first running play. Bernie Parmalee tackled by Leslie O'Neill. A gain of about four. Here's the San Diego defense. We've already seen Chris Mims and how he can destroy plans. Lee and Davis both over 300, and O'Neill led the team in sacks. Griggs, a former Dolphin. Gibson, an ex-Lion. Seau, an all-pro. Gordon and Harper at the corners, and Carrington and Richard are the safeties. In the dime, Willie Clark, the rookie from Notre Dame, and Sean Van Horse enter. Second down and eight. Underneath, Marino goes, and he's just shy of a first down to O.J. McDuffie, Dennis Gibson, the tackler. We talked with Dan Marino yesterday. It has uh, been felt since early in the season that that Achilles injury just did not heal properly. And we asked him point blank, what do you think? And he's been, you know, he's the kind of guy who would never complain, would want, not want you to know he's been playing in pain with that, that Achilles. He said, it looks as if I may have the operation. I'll find out. I'll get another opinion or two. He may be operated on as soon as the season ends.
the first down. Stanley Richard from his safety spot. The sheriff from Texas. Bill Arnsbarger, the longtime friend of Shula, calling the shots. Look at those two defensive tackles. They're pointing right in towards the center, and you see Stanley Richard again. Safety blitz, a run blitz. Arnsbarger, the defensive coordinator, has got a lot of tricks. He's going to pull him out early here to give the uh, Miami offense a lot to think about. Hit second punt. Gordon, who returned two for touchdowns during the season, bobbles, and then controls at the 15-yard line. 32-yard punt, no return. Five minutes gone, opening quarter. Dick, you get a few opportunities to see playoff intensity. I always like to leave an impression on your opponent. Sean Lee says to John Kidd, son, it's going to be a tough day for you. <laughs> You're in it, too. This isn't Pinky Lee. No, you. This is Sean Lee. That's right. Ronnie Harmon in the backfield on first down in motion. Humphreys looking for Mark Say. Say had 58 catches to tie Harmon for the club lead this year. Well, he admitted that the disaster two years ago at this time in Miami, 31 nothing Dolphins, where he didn't do much at all, as you can see, was his worst game. And uh, frankly, said, I've never looked at yeah. the taper film. I Doesn't want, want to. to, yeah. But at the same time, he also admitted, look, we were just happy to be in the playoffs. We're not really playing to Miami's level. This year, we do believe we belong. Natron. Hole closed in a hurry as Means is to the 20-yard line. A gain of five, maybe six. Jeff Cross and uh, Brian Cox on the stop. Means a rookie last year out of North Carolina, backed up Marion Butts. They thought so highly of uh, Natron Means. They said, we'll see you, Marion. We think this kid can do it. That 343 carries, that's the only thing that bothers me. Second most in the league behind Emmett Smith. That's a lot of work. On third and four, Humphreys to Sean Jefferson, and San Diego cheers its initial first down. Dick, what uh, San Diego is doing here is putting Miami in a real ticklish situation. This is Ronnie Harmon, and he's coming in motion, but Miami has its base defense. So when you have Ronnie Harmon in there against your base defense, you've got a linebacker on him or you go zone. And here Jefferson finds the seam, and it's an easy completion for Stan Humphreys. Now, that's something that San Diego can exploit. See how they're going to cover Ronnie Harmon. 16 yards on the play. <laughs> On first down, this man to Tony Martin, a former Dolphin, and Martin close to a first down. J.B. Brown made the tackle. Martin, one of those Chargers that has had a big, big play this year, a 99-yarder. Yeah, he uh, was uh, kind of let go in Miami. They kept O.J. McDuffie in his place, and actually he made a lot of drops in Miami. Dan Marino kind of lost confidence in him, but he did say when he left Miami, Don Shula treated him very fairly. Wished him good luck. Said, hey, we think you're going to be a great player someday. We can invest the time in you. Former college quarterback. First catch he ever made was in the pros. And what, what he said about Shula was, he says, the coach is so funny, he doesn't even know he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, except when you do something wrong, the coach is not funny. Shula hopes to get that uh, cast off his Achilles operation and be on his feet, he said, by Super Bowl time. The one thing about San Diego, Means may be stopped once or twice, but they'll keep giving it to him. You see the good pull, Isaac Davis, and also Harry Swain. Nice sweep run by San Diego. Just blows Miami off the line of scrimmage. This is a powerful offense San Diego has. A year ago, Means had a terrific day against the Dolphins rushing, as you can see. First down at the 35. Flag down. Eric the enemy had given means a break on this play, but it appeared the Chargers had two men in motion. 
Ball start. 87. Offense. Correction. 87. Offense. Simulating the start of a play. Still first down. Young. The San Diego Cannon uh, going all the way back to the L.A. Chargers, San Diego Chargers, Baron Hilton days, uh, signaling a big play. Touchdown for San Diego. They've got some cannons on this offense now. Means, Humphreys. First and 15. Oh, to Means. Running through people and over others. He has eight yards plus before Brian Cox can make the tackle. Short yardage there, but this has been a team San Diego with big plays. Seven over 70. Martin, 99 yards in Seattle. 90-yard punt return, Gordon. Coleman, kickoff, 90 yards. Coleman, kickoff, touchdown, 80 yards. Gordon, 75-yard punt return, <laughs> touchdown. Richard, 73-yard interception, touchdown. Seven over 70 for San Diego, but that, that's not what they want. No, no, they want to be slow and steady today. Eat up time on the clock. On second down, screen to Means. Breaks out of the initial hit from Cox. Bubbles the ball, and Miami recovers at the 21-yard line. That's just his fifth fumble of the season. Carried the ball 343 times, is an excellent receiver, but the ball is stripped away by Coleman, I believe. 90, strips it out of his arm. Jesse Solomon recovers for Miami at the 21, something that Bobby Ross nor any coach enjoys seeing, but especially San Diego, very infrequently do they give up the ball. In fact, they fumbled an NFL low 14 times the past two seasons combined. Now the Dolphins on the first turnover. Start from the 21. Harmony finding some running room. Has a first down out to the 34-yard line before Richard and Harper can make the tackle. 13 yards for Bernie Parmley. You look at Natron Means. Lead blocker Saxon, an excellent blocker. Good cut by Parmley right here to the outside. Runs out of the arm of Reuben Davis. I mean, this guy is a special teams player. Was a special teams captain. Had a good preseason, and Don Shula couldn't keep him out of the lineup. Here's Junior Seau being hit by James Sackett. Saxon, that is an excellent block by Saxon. First down, Miami. No score. Under 540 left in the opening quarter. Moreno, O'Neal can't get him. And a great throw over the middle to Irving Fryer, who had a career year with Miami this season with 73 catches, 17 yards on that play. Uh, Dick, watch one of the greatest attributes that Dan Marino has. He avoids that first rusher. Yeah, you see, Leslie O'Neill comes from the outside, just takes that little hop up, always looking down the field for a receiver. O'Neill makes a good move, but Marino gets himself out of the way of jeopardy there and still makes the completion. First down, San Diego 49. Marino changing plays. Saxon and Parmalee split now behind him. Over the middle to Jackson and Stanley Richard coming up. Had a shot at a pick. And once again, Marino gets the ball off, but Mims knocks him down. Miami has had its greatest difficulty scoring early throughout this year. It's hard to believe that Marino does not have a touchdown pass of his 30, not one in the opening quarter. Uh, that, that is hard to believe. I don't understand why that is, except that there, there is generally a lot of experimenting going on by Miami. What defense do we see against this particular down and distance and use of personnel? So maybe that accounts for it. Incomplete, and that's the kind of pass that uh, gives shivers to Don Ashula, bouncing high into the secondary. Dennis Gibson made the break on Aaron Craver. Well, one thing Miami has done historically, long time, they like to throw it to running backs. And Aaron Craver, Tony Nathan, I think, started it for Miami. Jim Kick did. 
And they've developed that offense where with motion and with formation, they try to release a receiver down through there. This time it was Aaron Craver. Third down 10. Marino's been knocked down four times by the Charger pass rush, which was third best in the league in sacks. He finds Fryer open enough first down inside the 30. Eric Castle, an extra defensive back, made the tackle. 19 yards. Excellent pattern here, run by Fryer. Extra defensive back in the ball game, but Fryer big, strong in zone. He reads it properly, makes it makes a good sharp cut, and Dan Marino certainly has confidence in Irving Fryer. Never had a better year. Fryer, the first player selected in '84 by New England. That's his top mark: 73 catches, seven touchdowns. Two for 37 yards today. So out of third and ten, Marino gets a first down at the Charger 29. Throws this one wide open to the 10. And Keith Jackson has first and goal Miami. Dwayne Harper finally wrestles him down. Dick, this is the tight end out and up. Beautifully executed again. Now watch Marino keep himself alive. That little slide step, great confidence. There's a blitz coming by San Diego. Carrington was the closest man in coverage. Of course, then watch this out and up. See the blitz coming? Knows it's man to man. Carrington looks back. Jackson turns it up. Marino puts it right on the money. Now well, Miami threatens first stand goal at the eight. Harmony, no game. Junior Seau. Junior uh, in our conversation with us told him that told us that his uh, left arm is still a problem. He's got a neck stinger and his arm goes numb. And I said, well, what do you do about it? He said, well, it needs a lot of rest. I got I didn't have enough rest to uh, get completely healed, but I'm about 90 percent and I can play through the pain. Spikes and Parmalee in the eye. And now the shift. Stanley Richard for the second time they bring the safety on a blitz. Yeah, so Dick, what San Diego is doing is when Miami goes motion, here's Keith Jackson coming in motion, then the San Diego Chargers are coming with a blitz. I mean, it's a, it's point counterpoint here. Actually, Keith Sims, the left guard, can, does an excellent job to come out there and get a helmet on Stanley Richard. He hits Richard right in the side of the helmet. Then the receiver was Aaron Craver out in the flat. Third and goal. Jackson wide open. Keith Jackson for the touchdown. Marino directing a brilliant drive all the yardage significantly through the air and Keith Jackson with an eight yard strike. The veteran from Oklahoma says next year will be his last year. Uh, Dick that time Miami ran motion and there was no blitz and there should have been. If they blitz Keith Jackson gets held up at the line of scrimmage. Pete Stoyanovich with a try after. Dan Marino has thrown a touchdown pass in 12 consecutive playoffs. That's an NFL record. Watch Junior say out drop. Keith Jackson runs a little circle route. That quick release. And before any defensive back can get there, Jackson scores. Welcome back to San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium, where the Dolphins have struck first 7 nothing. A 79-yard drive in nine plays after... Natron means fumble and Keith Jackson with the eight yard touchdown catch from Marino. Andre Coleman now the kick return artist the rookie from Kansas State for San Diego took two back for scores this year. Stoyanovich. Coleman. 
looking for a crease. It's not there. Grant Boyer made the tackle at about the 26-yard line. Dick, back to the touchdown. Here's McDuffie in motion, and this is Jackson Stanley Richard. When McDuffie releases, Van Horst comes with him, and it's a simple en route by Keith Jackson. They're expecting some pressure on Dan Marino, but again, when he breaks in Stan inside Stanley Richard, somebody blows the coverage because nobody's there. Watch how open he is. There is a moment's hesitation by Stanley Richard, 24, and Jackson's in the end zone. Means trying to get too much with the fumble at the 21. Solomon recovered, and that led to the 79-yard drive. Ronnie Harmon on first down. A rare running play for Harmon out to the 32. During the season, he carried only 25 times. His role usually in the passing game where he caught 58. And he comes out, and Eric the enemy comes in. I think one of the things they want to do with Ronnie Harmon is just create that that little bit of indecision in Miami's defense. Are they going to throw to him or, they, or are they going to hand to him? It, it, it changes what you do defensively a great deal. Second down four. This is Eric Bieniemy, and the former star at Colorado who finished the third for the Heisman in 91. Looks to have close to a first down. They're going to measure Johnny Greer, our referee today. Yeah, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Congratulations to Bill Cowher's team. A very impressive winner yesterday. And undoubtedly a day in which they'll have time to watch this one and uh, be interesting to listen to the cheers as to whom they hope they'll be facing on Sunday next. Uh, I think their response, oh, we don't care. Oh, not, in, always not, in, that. not in Pittsburgh in the middle of January. But we'll take a team from San Diego. <laughs> we'll take a team from Miami. Come on in to Three River Stadium. Bring on the cold and snow. Yeah, we don't care which one. Third down and inches. Steve Hendrickson, all-purpose Hendrickson, is the blocking back. It's Humphreys who sneaks it ahead and didn't get much but didn't need much. First down. Oh, what a day. Thank goodness the weather has cleared at least for a few hours. These aerial shots courtesy of the Goodyear Blim Beagle based in Carson, California. More rain is on the way. They predict three storms are lined up out in the Pacific and they could hit sometime uh, early evening. But uh, that's about the only blue sky folks in this part of the Southern California have seen for quite a while. <laughs> it was waist deep out here early in the week, wasn't it? <laughs> First down for Humphreys. Throws to Sean Jefferson. Nice move on J.B. Brown. First down, San Diego, out to the 49, 48-yard line. Now, that last touchdown, Miami has put a little bit of pressure on the San Diego offensive game plan. This is a simple route. Choice by Stan Humphreys. He takes the square in. J.B. Brown, the closest man in coverage. Nice first down pickup by the Chargers. They don't have to change a thing here. Be patient, but they got to get the ball in the end zone. First quarter complete, and Miami with the lead. There's a junior sale fan, obviously, from uh, Chiefs territory, wearing 19. She threw, she threw the ball over 50 yards yeah. on, the, on the mark. She was impressive. Eric Bieniemy for Natron Means. We don't know if Means is injured. Bieniemy. Close to 10 yards to the 42-yard line in the first play of the second quarter. Michael Stewart made the tackle. And Means obviously is okay. Dick, look at the old man pull here. Stan Brock, 67. Kind of loses his footing a little bit, but gets a good hit on Jesse Solomon. Eric Bieniemy breaks behind him. Chargers, whether it's Means, whether it's the enemy, they have the chance to control the line of scrimmage here against the Miami Dolphins. they got to stay with the game plan, but they've got to answer that scoring drive. First down, 41. Fake to Means. Humphreys to Jefferson, and it's offline as Humphreys went down, hit as he threw. Marco Coleman and Tim Bowens in on the San Diego quarterback. Time of possession, and of course, part of the themes this week for San Diego was to keep the ball away from yes. Marino. You generally get in an NFL game 
12 offensive possessions, six a half. San Diego is thinking, look, if we can cut it down to seven or eight and make Dan Marino go the long field, then maybe we can neutralize him a little bit. Well, the first drive was 79 yards. Uh, it's got to have to be a long, long field to neutralize Marino. And it was all Marino. Means endeavoring to make amends after his fumble to the 38-yard line, a gain of nearly four. Aubrey Beavers, the rookie from Oklahoma, made the stop. He has a uh, bruise on the outside of his left knee. That may be why he's coming off the field with a, a slight limp. Uh, he had that, uh, that week off kind of freshened his legs a little bit, but the, the bruise doesn't require any taping or anything, but it, it does begin to ache when he takes hits on it. Talk about aches. What part of that body do you try to tackle? <laughs> Shoelaces. <laughs> Third and long, incomplete and almost intercepted by Brian Cox. Troy Vincent covering Mark Say. Circle route run by Mark Say just an underneath. They're going for the shore. Fourth Third down, down here. conversion here, and they're going to go for it on fourth down. They had man coverage. Stan Humphreys makes the right choice, but Say can't make the reception. So on fourth down and seven. The Chargers go for it at the 38-yard line. Harmon in motion. Oh, oh my, Ronnie Harmon playing that one like an outfielder. They run him in motion. And they get a little crowd over here on the left, and Ronnie Harmon fakes like he's going outside, comes inside, stick, Velcro. Oh, it's mine. And it's playing like he's got a first baseman's mitt. Fired in here. Chuck we it saw in here, him baby. do exactly that in practice, in practice yeah. two days ago, one-handed. Oh. Harmon gives San Diego life on fourth and seven. And me burrows inside the 20. Dig that fourth down attempt all in the, in the thinking of San Diego. Keep it out of Dan Marino's hands. I have great confidence in my offense. Bobby Ross makes the call. You got to give your offense a chance to win the football game and on fourth down and six or seven, what's the big deal? Six for Humphreys. Caputo is open, and the tight end has it at the seven. Ball comes free, but it had been whistled dead. A 17-yard play. Alfred Papunu from Weber State. Dick, nobody covered Papunu at all. Now, understand he's the size of a guard, but he does wear an eligible number. So somebody's going to have to cover him. That was an easy completion for Stan Humphreys. I mean, there was nobody between him and the receiver. Papuno is in there as their tight end blocker. Joe Gibbs will relate to his yes. role very well. It's much like that Washington offense, that big tight end. Don Warren. First and goal. Take to Means. Throw it away. Good coverage by the Miami defense. They had two defenders on the two receivers that were out on the pattern. Yeah, they tried to get both Young and Mitchell, the two big, they call them tight ends or H-backs, but they're, they're basically guards with eligible numbers. Excellent coverage by Miami. 7-0 Dolphins, 11-25 remaining in this first half. Tom Olivadotti, the defensive coordinator for Miami. 13th play of the drive. Means. To the three, maybe two and a half yard line. Gene Atkins, a free agent from New Orleans, made the stop. And can you see the confidence they have in Means in his offensive line? Again, double pull. Picozo and Brock also come around there. And uh, Atron Means lowers his shoulder. There's just not much to hang on to there. 41 yards rushing for Means in this first half. He gets the ball to the two-yard line, third and goal. Oh, 
Ronnie Harmon in motion. Oh. Incomplete. Well covered by the Miami defense and Michael Stewart, who made the big play in stripping the ball from Marcus Allen in the Kansas City win a week ago, was uh, very close to going 100 the other yes, way. Yes, he was. You know, Dick, because they threw on second down, and it took them out of the idea that they could go for all four downs here. This is definitely four down area. Oh, well, Carney to try what amounts to an extra point that'll count for three as Gilbert holds a 20 yard field goal. Carney on his way to the Pro Bowl, the leading scorer in the NFL this year. He missed only four of 38 field goals. And he gets San Diego on the board. Miami. So the Chargers have had two long drives, 65 yards and 72 yards. One ended in a fumble, the other in just a field goal. Yeah, so good news and bad news. They got the ball, they kept it a long time, but just three points out of those two drives, not enough. And Marino itching for his next chance as Carney kicks it off. McDuffie and Spike Sadiq. It's to McDuffie. He's the same one man to beat. And Hendrickson, no, it is uh, number 54, Doug Miller, who makes the tackle at midfield. Duel down in Mission Valley, San Diego, California. Just what Marino ordered, good field position. O.J. McDuffie, a 42-yard kickoff return to the Dolphin 48-yard line. receiver McDuffie first down at the 41 of the Chargers Darian Gordon and we uh, may have a late hit on the Chargers personal foul unnecessary roughness number 21 defense first down Darian Gordon the left corner on his coverage well, Bobby Ross, I think, thought his team grew up a little bit a couple of years ago, but this is a very childish and foolish play at that point. I mean, knowing that your defense has got a short field behind you, one of the greatest throwers of the football in the game, he's staring right at the sideline. That ends up being something like a 30 or 25 or 30 yard play here. 26. First down at the 26. Inside the 20 yard line as Dwayne Harper unable to bring him down on the initial hit. Dennis Gibson and Ruben Davis finally got him to the turf. And, and see Dick now with, with the ball position that Miami has, they can run every part of their offense. This is the little drag slant. The slant was to McDuffie. It's covered. He goes to the drag by the tight end. And you, you're starting to see now San Diego, it's not working. So they're starting to try more than they should here. Keep your head, San Diego. Keep your head. Second down three. Open again. Irving Fryer. First down at the 14. Now, Dick, we were told by members of the San Diego Chargers that they wanted good, tight coverage on the outside receivers. Try to reroute them. Try to at least take Dan Marino away from his first three. To this point in this game, they've done none of that. They have blitzed, yes, but they've not rerouted these receivers. McDuffie and Fryer, both big, both strong. San Diego's not getting them a bump on them at all. McDuffie left, Fryer right, first down. Ball State able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Dennis Gibson uh, spearheaded the defensive charge. There's uh, Bill Arnsparger. Sparker. He is the, the architect of this defense, also the architect of the no name defense that shut everybody out. Bill, Miami. 68 years young now. I had 
prostate surgery earlier in the year. He is a wizard. Oh, man. And this guy played for Woody Hayes, played for Blanton Collier, coached under both with Shula. Not much he doesn't know about the defensive side of this game. Open receiver in the flat is James Saxon. Saxon, former Kansas City Chief. Out of bounds uh, at the nine. Oh, it's Junior Seau now. Pressure up through the middle to try to disrupt Dan Marino's rhythm. Pressure from the outside by O'Neill, but Junior Seau was late. Again, with that quick release and the knowledge of this offense and an expert at reading defenses, he goes to the outlet receiver for positive yardage. It's third down, a long four. They call it five, but it's less than that. Jackson in motion. Oh, man. Touchdown, Keith Jackson, two for two. Beautiful. The motion has hurt San Diego's defense, and that and the missed opportunities. Dick Reno's got one receiver in mind here. Jackson goes in motion. Watch him wait. Jackson, Jackson, he fakes inside. He comes back outside. When he turns around, bam. How do you stop it? No one has yet. He not only uh, has two touchdowns, but every time he's caught the ball, he takes a couple of steps before he runs into any defense. Stoyanovic with a point after. And the Dolphins, impressive, and Marino couldn't play any better than the way he's thrown the ball those last two touchdown drives. Well, Don Shula has to like the ride so far in San Diego. 14 to 3. That ride's been downhill in his first half. Andre Coleman at the five as Stoyanovich sends a twister to the near sideline. Fielded by the enemy. And he's tackled at the 26-yard line. Tomorrow night, Major Dads uh, Gerald McCraney and Tracy Scoggins will star. World premiere of Jake Lassiter, Justice on the Bayou. That's tomorrow night at 9, 8 Central here on NBC. Now, Dick, 14 to 3, 7 11 to go in the first half here. Now, you basically take the running game away from San Diego. Uh, they need points, they need them now. So they've, they've eliminated Natron Means here. Even though he might be in the backfield, they're not going to hammer the line of scrimmage with him. And meanwhile, Marino is humming. He was 5 for oh, 5 man. on that last scoring drive that went 52 yards in six plays. They go to Mark Say, and he's hit by Jesse Solomon, shy of the first down at the 35. Good pattern run, short. And then see Say come out from the right hand side, just a little delay. Try to flush the defense to the right, get an underneath receiver. Solomon makes a good, solid tackle, not enough for the first down. Well, so far it's uh, all Marino, two touchdowns. Although. Uh, Humphreys has moved his team, just can't get any points. Means has blockers. He's all the way to the Miami 46 yard line. Nene, he was called by Mama. That's all right. The sweep with Natron means. I mean, that's like a pass. Excellent job again, Davis, number 73 out in front. Going with one of those big tight ends. Shannon Mitchell. Shannon Mitchell, a good escort. For Natron Means, he knows how to get him first down. And, of course, with all his carries, he's going to get his chance. Just to have your name right behind Emmett Smith in any category yeah. is a compliment. That's a nice list. Mary Sanders, Jerry Rice in that list. Means with 59 yards Ooh. rushing. He's got a lot more than that. Look at him cut inside the block to the 26-yard line. John Jefferson throwing a shielding block. 20 more for Means. He's got a 79-yard half. Yeah. The uh, offensive linemen get running backs eight yards. Wide receivers blocking. They get you 80. Excellent job out front. And see that little move? That little move gets him outside, and then Sean Jefferson does help. Harry Swain with an excellent block. Now they're going to the perimeter of this defense. 240 pounds, showing the speed of an 180-pounder. 
He's averaging 8.8 yards a carry. The enemy replaces means. The enemy to the 23 yard line and hanging on a desperate tackle from Aubrey Beavers. Gain of three. The enemy, if he can just pick his feet up, here's Swain again coming. A good blocking down in there. The running back jumps up through there. Nice saving tackle here by Beavers, but again, watch Swain. Excellent job. Now you hope the running back can break that tackle. The enemy stays in. Harmon is out in the far wing. And then they get to the enemy. Stewart saved the touchdown. Well, my opinion when this drive started that they had to throw it. Good thing they weren't listening. <laughs> Means and the enemy have been this drive. Again, nice little delay that catches the Miami Dolphins deep. Here's Brian Cox, middle linebacker. Excellent job done by another one of those H-back tight ends. First and goal at the six. Means caught from behind. Marco Coleman was able to break through, and Michael Stewart came up to support. No gain. They had first and goal earlier in the game and uh, threw on first down and finally had to settle for a field goal. Stopped at the two. Yeah, they have more field goals than they do touchdowns when they're inside the 20, and you can see how poor they've been. But this is most assuredly a four down area they, they can't take another field goal here San Diego running the ball more effectively in terms of yards than passing it Humphreys nobody open wide open now is young but overthrown Dwayne Young one of the big H back tight ends uh, uh, Dick I don't understand this I mean they run the ball to this point and then I guess they read their own statistics. We're not good inside the 20, so they try something tricky. You've got Natron Means in the backfield. Keep giving it to him. Here comes Harmon and Sean Jefferson. Third and goal at the six. And Don Shula counters with four, five changes as he brings in his dollar defense. That's seven defensive backs. They try a flanker reverse and Jefferson stopped at the four. Yeah, just think of where we've been down here. San Diego down on the goal line. We've seen nothing but finesse plays. Nothing but finesse down there inside the 10 yard line as opposed to just trying to power it in the end zone. They go with it as Ralph Region, the offensive coordinator. If it works, he's a genius. To this point, it hasn't worked. You don't like to see field goals 20 yards and now 21 Miami calls time may not have had enough men on the field so we'll uh, pause with 250 left in the half. The Chargers story continues long drives few points apparently as Carney after a 70 yard drive set up for a short field goal now the thinking here not like yesterday Cleveland Pittsburgh where the Browns were down 17 nothing and having trouble moving the ball went for the field goal. Here's a case where you make the field goal you move the ball well and you're an eight point touchdown away from a tie. That's amazing. And they changed personalities inside the 10. And Carney chips in the easy one. It's 14 to 6. Dick, again a missed opportunity. We almost saw an interception to stop a drive by San Diego. One trip down there, they fumble. Two trips down now into the uh, by the goal line, and, and they've kicked field goals. And it, I don't understand that the personality of this team is a power team, and it certainly should be that inside the 10 yard line. So three drives of over 65 yards for San Diego. Earlier today, I'm sure most of you are well aware, it was the Dallas Cowboys. Eliminating Green Bay 35 to 9 and setting an NFL playoff record with a 94 yard touchdown pass from Troy Aikman to Alvin Harper. The bad news for the Cowboys Emmett Smith aggravated that hamstring injury and left the game in the first half and as far as we know did not return. That's real bad news. 
Dallas needs Emmett Smith to win. A reminder tonight on NBC, it's all new episodes of Earth 2 and Sequest, followed by the network television premiere of Ricochet. That's starting at 7, 6 Central here on NBC. So stay with us on the Peacock tonight. Brian Cox was not happy on that fourth down field goal setup as he came out of the game, whether it was the fact that he just didn't want to come out, but he uh, had some emotional words with Tom Olivadotti, the defensive coordinator, who just calmly uh, said, hey, it's all right, Joe Green yeah. was there, too. Yeah, that's the best way to deal with Brian Cox. Calmly, coolly, let him settle down and keep that emotion inside. John Carney, short, and to Irving Spikes. He sees a crease and is hit at the 30-yard line. Spikes from northeast Louisiana, same school that produced Dan Humphreys. Uh, Dick, this, this was the, they were about to attempt a field goal here, and Brian Cox throws his helmet down. I think Miami had 12 men on the field, and as Brian Cox goes to the sideline, that's Tom Olivadotti, the defensive coordinator. As you say, Tom, very calm, very cool, very collected. Brian Cox has done a, a great job moving from outside linebacker to inside linebacker. I think he's playing it on instinct. First year there, he didn't know how to play middle linebacker, but he plays. 2.38 left in the half, and Marino and Miami with a 14-6 lead. Screen it to Spikes. Or check that Aaron Craver. It's Craver, and he's out for about four yards before Richard and Harper can make the stop. And now, Dick, 2.25 to go. Miami's already setting up for the two-minute warning here. They're already in their two-minute offense, trying to stay at the line of scrimmage, get more points. San Diego's been very generous with the opportunities for Miami. Craver in the backfield, re-signed by Miami when Byers was injured. Marino underneath. Craver again. Fights to the 38-yard line. It'll be third down and two at the two-minute warning. Back to Kimbers with four-time Pro Bowl tight end Bob Trumpy. Boy, he just quivers thinking about what it would have been like to be on the same team with a Dan Marino. Oh, Although Kenny Anderson I, I, no, I had a chance. Greg Cook, before he got hurt, he could have been Dan Marino, but there's been nobody since Joe Namath to throw the ball with the velocity and the release like Dan Marino. Marino has hit nine in a row. He has his Dolphins in front, 14 to six, and he faces third and two. Hand off to Spikes. The second, Craver again, and Craver has the first down. Aaron Craver, here's a man that was released, and Don Shula said, I couldn't believe that no one picked him up. He was sitting out there, and we needed someone, and Byers went down, and Craver producing. Big block by Keith Jackson coming from the outside. Craver, a big weightlifter, a very strong running back. Underneath, and it's to McDuffie, close to another first down at the San Diego 42. And Dick. 43 they mark it. You can't give Dan Marino and Miami these chances. It's just suicide. What? Had it in the air by Junior Seau. So Seau filtering his way through almost deflected that one to himself. I got Junior on a blitz. He recognizes what's coming and watch the athletic ability here. Gets around the blocker. Hands up quickly. Oh, it's one hand. That could have been the play to turn the tide here. Marino's string of 10 straight completions snapped there by Seau. It took an all throw to do it. Now three plays in the huddle. Two he calls, one an automatic. In a minute and 13 seconds, try to get as much yardage as he can here. Miami has two timeouts left. And now only one. They got the time before a delay of game penalty. So the Dolphins saved the five yards, but have only one. Wait a minute. Out wait a minute. Far to the full timeout. No, no, actually, get in time. Actually, that's a plus. It is. It really is, because it's third now and six, and you still have two timeouts. So the ball mark back at the 48-yard line. Eric Castle, an extra defensive back in for San Diego. That's the first 
Miami penalty of a well played half both sides. Sliding, diving grab in front of Darren Carrington for 24 yards. And how about the read and throw by Marino? Marino. He throws it where it can't be intercepted. It can only be completed or it's an incomplete pass. Lots of time again and another good catch by Keith Jackson. Open at the 16 and then the timeout called by Marino with 42 seconds left and because they saved the timeout on the delay of game penalty they still have one remaining. Absolutely they could use the entire width of the field but here's the big completion to Irving Fryer. He's looking down the field finding a receiver that quick release and Fryer makes a catch. You know it's interesting in talking to Dan Marino he said that uh, when he went to the University of Pittsburgh Jackie Sherrill was his head coach. Jackie said, Sherrill said to him son don't let any coach ever mess with your delivery. They can tell you anything. They can do anything with you. Don't let them mess with your delivery. And remember what Fryer told us midseason. He said that uh, Marino with that injury and the fact that he sat out last year and realized that time is short. He's uh, age is getting him like it gets everyone that he's playing with a vengeance this yes. year and I'm the beneficiary. Oh no question about it. And, and look at the numbers. The difference in touchdowns to interceptions. 76 143 more Joe Montana 133 more touchdowns to interceptions on the all time list the quarterbacks want wins and they want points and Marino has been one of the best. Second and two. That's Leslie O'Neill shouting something to his teammates they're not going to get it all. Over. That's two timeouts in a row. That's two timeouts in a row. Delay. Delay. Oh. Offense. That's, that's twice now the officials have helped him. They gave him the timeout on the other one. They don't let him have it here. That would have been a penalty. So they still have the one timeout. 42 seconds left. The key to this game, if you're just joining us, each team has been inside the 20. San Diego twice, two field goals. Miami twice, two touchdowns, and they were inside the 20 again. Miami was charged with the delay. They cannot call consecutive timeouts. Now yeah, you're right on that, Bob Trumpy. And Don Shula, member of the Rules Committee, uh, knew it as well. Now there's a say inside the 20, and I think it's more what San Diego's done to themselves inside the 20 that's resulted in those field goals. Really doesn't matter. They got the five yard penalty. They still have a timeout left. Going for six. Off the fingertips of Irving Fryer, but I believe the Chargers were guilty of an illegal chuck. Darian Gordon on that left corner again. Uh, the spotlight on him along with Eric Castle. Automatic first down, Miami. Thirty seven seconds left. Holding 21 defense first down only three San Diego penalties two on Darian Gordon. There's Darian Gordon right there. You see he grabs the jersey of Irving Fryer probably very smart. Yeah that would have been a touchdown. No otherwise. question. It's just enough to hold him. Yep. They'll take the penalty. Clock is on their side here with 37 to go. Miami trying to build on its 14 to 6 lead. Seau on the blitz. Jackson turned one way to pass the other and Stanley Richard has to be talking to himself yeah. the way Jackson's turning him around. Uh, blitz run by San Diego Junior Seau. They also had safeties on the blitz. Eric Castle. Watch all the blitzing. And here's Keith Jackson again to fakes the out and up and Richard buys it. Uh, Marino throws that to the inside. It's a completion but there was so much pressure coming. He had to get rid of it. Marino with one hundred and ninety yards in this first half.
Guns this one complete. Touchdown! Mike Williams, who did not have a touchdown all season long. You can't give Dan Marino those opportunities. He just will eat you alive. 16 yards as Marino has thrown for his third touchdown in the half. And Mike Williams will take that one home. His first ever, I believe, Miami touchdown in this his fourth season. Boyanovic makes it 21 to 6. Again, excellent job by the offensive line first, giving him time. Here's the slant pattern run, and again, Marino with that quick delivery. When he gets that thing up and ready to go, bam, it's gone. The defensive back has no chance to recover from any mistake that he makes. Watch Marino's eyes. He knows where he's going. He puts his rear end into it. He almost makes the catch. Uh, th this was awful easy. This was entirely easy. Watch the defensive that kind of back off of the receiver. You see, it looks like it's a little kick. They're going to the outside. And Marino chooses the inside guy, and he's wide open. Yeah. 70 yards in nine plays. Two minutes, 20 seconds for Marino to get number three. And that touchdown changes the whole thinking of this game going into the locker room. Now you don't go for field goal. Yeah. Coming up, it's the Domino's Pizza NFL Live Halftime Report with Greg Gumbel, Mike Ditka, and Joe Gibbs on tap. First half analysis of this game. A live interview with that terrific cornerback in Pittsburgh, Rod Woodson, and the national finals of the Gatorade Punt Pass and Kick Competition, featuring the first female to ever make it to the national finals, and she's good, 12-year-old Kendra Wecker from Kansas. Yeah, she had mom and dad here watching. They were really cheering from the end zone for Kendra. How's that for uh, oh, second quarter... Uh, numbers for Dan Marino and, and Dick there are times when you can draw up any defense you want you can have as gifted a defender defensive back as you want when he's in the zone and he has been for the last two weeks you can't stop it you absolutely cannot stop him I mean San Diego starts the game banging him they get him on the ground a couple of hits he's so tough inside comes back like he's had all day and just stands there and tears him apart and they stopped him forced Miami to punt the first two possessions, but the three Miami opportunities since have gone for three touchdowns, all Marino passes. Two to Jackson and one now to infrequently use Mike Williams. They skid the kick off Culver's hands and it goes to Ronnie Harmon. And Harmon Fights out to the 37-yard line, and Stan Humphreys has 21 seconds to try to do something special to cut into what now is a uh, sizable Miami lead. They're almost to the point now where they, they can't concede any downs here in the first half. They got to try a Hail Mary, a hook and lateral, anything to get the ball down the field. Well, the pattern this uh, playoffs has been home team and basically home team favorite and home team winning by a sizable margin, but Miami. Turning that around thus far, 21 to 6. And San Diego's done it to themselves. Chargers have all three timeouts left. And down goes Humphreys, Marco Coleman with a sack. He had six in the regular season, and he has been harassing Humphrey and the Chargers more than any of the uh, Miami defenders. And Dick, this was just a three-man rush. The Dolphins, uh, not renowned for their sacks, 29 total this year. And the average in the league <laughs> is 40.8. <laughs> so they got their sack in the sack. Is <laughs> Small sack oh, they've been this season. <laughs> What's that? that playoff creativity yes. is here. When you give them time, they'll come up with stuff. You don't know what, <laughs> but they'll come up with Let stuff. John Paratis, our producer, <laughs> director John Gonzalez, good to have Tommy Roy. NBC's executive producer of sports with us today in San Diego. Dick, uh, when San Diego goes in at halftime, they're going to kick themselves, absolutely kick themselves for the opportunities they've missed. Again, a three-man rush. 
underneath to the 40 yard line a gain of 11 and time out with 11 seconds left. Reminder again tonight it's all new episodes of Earth 2 and sequel. I don't wonder that Earth 2 we might see Marino on there the way he's going. <laughs> he's, a, he's in his own orbit followed by the network television premiere of Ricochet that starts at 7 6 central here on NBC. He's Marino's definitely not an alien but he does play at a much higher level. And I don't think we can underplay one bit what Marino has gone through this year. The disappointment to know in summer camp that that Achilles just wasn't right. Yeah. And it didn't get one bit better, he said, all season long. Never got better. As a matter of fact, when you, that's the brace he wears on his ankle. When you look at his calf, I mean, it, it, it's puny. It's pathetic. I mean, he has to uh, really protect himself when he's out there. And he can't run much. He can barely walk. He can certainly throw. Oh. Hey, hey, Humphreys downfield. Intercepted. Picked off by Smith. Frankie Smith. And he's tackled at the 40-yard line as the first half comes to an end. And appropriately, it ends on another Miami blow. And the enthusiastic fans in San Diego send their team off the field with a chorus of boos. Stan Humphreys is trying to make a big play here, Dick. He chooses the real deep receiver when the intermediate receiver, Mark Say, was open. And then Frankie Smith runs out the half just running across the field. Smith from Baylor, who did not have an interception all season, so they're all in the act. And Miami with Marino leads 21 to 6 at the break. Let's go to Great Gumble in New York. And man from Kansas State. Can't find an opening to the 28-yard line as we check the Coors Light halftime statistics. And there'll be a lot of big numbers here. Both teams over 200 total yards. Dolphins, almost all of it in the air and the Chargers pounding away on the ground. Yeah, the Chargers have 123 yards rushing the football in the first half, but I don't know what happened to them inside the 10. They had eight snaps inside the 10, to Dick, and got six points. I mean, they just abandoned the running game for some reason, and I don't think that was a very intelligent thing to do. It's also a bad message to the rest of the San Diego Chargers. We think we got to finesse them down on the goal line. Well, this first possession of the second half is so critical for San Diego. Means plows for about six. Let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Dick Bobby Ross said the same thing. He said, we can move the ball on offense here. We just have to make a bigger plays. But he was more concerned about the defense. It was very direct and very forthright. He said, hey, we're going to play more man-to-man. -man. We're going to blitz. we got to get to Marino and get him out of the zone. Don Shu on the other side of the ball. I said, what about the first half, coach? Hey, there was one word, Marino. He's making every right decision. Back to you, Dick. Okay, Doc. Second down and four. Humphreys underneath to Harmon. Tackled at the 40. First down, San Diego. Let's check the two quarterbacks, Marino and Humphreys. And Dick, uh, remember the game started with a lot of contact on Marino, but 17 of 24 for three touchdowns. And Stan Humphrey just eight of 17. He's not been able to get the ball down the field. The one interception, uh, that at the end of the half. Keith Jackson, six catches, two for score. Sean Jefferson leading San Diego with the two uh, somewhat meaningless grabs. First down at the 40 for Humphreys. Into the flat, mean. Whoa! Cox trying to take his head off. And Mean just ducks under it and gains five. Well, that time you saw Brian Cox at least stick his arms out there to try to make the tackle. The little swing pass to Means. Well thrown by Stan Humphreys, but Means not tall. Brian Cox almost goes over the top of it. <laughs> the hidden head trick by Natron. What an athlete. Both. Pick one. You could start a franchise with either one of them, Means or Brad Cox. The enemy now in the backfield. The enemy gets the ball. Flag down. The enemy into Miami territory with a first down if Aubrey Beavers makes the tackle. Holding San Diego. Now, when the referee throws the flag and it's not a pass, you know it's holding. And Johnny Greer threw the flag. Holding, Holding. 53, 53. Offense. offense, still second down. 
Courtney Hall, the center. Regarded as the leader of that offensive line for the Chargers. Here's uh, Courtney Hall. He's got uh, Klingbeil on his nose. Oh, he uh, kind of grabs a hold of it. I don't know. He kind of stuck his arm up around Klingbeil's leg. Chuck ran right through it. Kind of a mystery hold there. Rodney Culver makes his first appearance, rarely used. Humphreys to Culver. Skips out of one tackle. And he's on his way to the 45 of Miami. Good running by Culver. They had him for a short game and kick free for an 18 yard pickup. Now, San Diego comes, with, excuse me, Miami comes with a blitz. Culver avoids Brian Cox. Solomon should make the tackle. No question about that, but a missed tackle. And that's been something that's hurt Miami the last couple of three weeks. Again, Cox, he runs the game. Over slips right by him, and then nice pick up San Diego. You're right, Dick. This drive means the game. We're in it or we're home. Stepped out at the 47. Swing it the other way to Means. And Means bumped out by Michael Stewart at the 42 yard line, a gain of five. Boy, that's almost unfair to give Means a running start with a ball, lead him like that right into a defensive back. And not, not what defensive backs uh, dream, sweet dreams about. They're more nightmares. So Means has contributed over 100 yards total, 85 rushing and 16 on three catches. 101 day so far for Means, 12 minutes remaining in the third quarter. A lot of time finally dumps it off. And it's Alfred Papunu, short yards, and perhaps uh, just did get to the line of scrimmage. Stan Humphreys uh, has gone through a painful season, injured hip, a sprained ankle, a sprained knee, and a dislocated left elbow being the most serious, and he's still wearing a brace on that uh, elbow that was dislocated uh, mid year. Yeah, upper arm, this is where the lower arm goes. He said, I'm not comfortable with it. But when he first got it, he couldn't really hold the ball where he normally does just, just before he threw it. So it, he was a little rusty there for a while. Big third and five, and Humphreys has converted only one today. He got it wide open to say. Mark Say inside the 30. Cox made the tackle. 14-yard play. Uh, Dick, I sensed that Boss Ross at halftime probably put some teeth marks on some folks. But the offense here is a lot crisper. They're running more precise patterns. Protection is a little better for Stan Humphreys. It's just a darn shame that it took him so long to get the wake up call here. And uh, Tom Olivadotti on the side here. Wait a minute, what's going on here? What, who's got that man in coverage? Means. Well, you can hear those blockers popping past. And it took half the defense to finally drag down Means. The last man there was uh, Cox. Uh, Dick, for a young guy, Means is only 22 years old. Watch the patience he is. Here. He allows the garden tackle to get out in front of him. See the little skip steps? Finds the little slot, a little crack, the little seam gets up through there. Runs through the tackle of Brian Cox. Very gifted runner. Been 240 pounds. Since he was a sophomore in college, so knows how to carry that weight. Means met in the hole. Fine hit by veteran Craig Vesey, who wants very much to go on next Sunday because he would then face his former teammates, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now they kind of alternate the defensive tackles here for Miami. Here's Vesey right here, does an excellent job of getting around the block. They try to double team him. With the center and the guard fights through both and makes the tackle. Now they're third and long for Humphreys and Ronnie Harmon comes in. He's flanked out to the left. Good drive for Humphreys. He needs another good throw. Arnold's long, wide open is Harmon. Broken up at the last minute by Gene Atkins. What a play by Atkins. Got there just in time. He played it beautifully. That looked to be a perfectly timed throw by Humphreys as Harmon broke clear. That was the, the out and up. 
And that's what Keith Jackson scored on for Miami. So San Diego said, all right, we'll try it. Now on fourth down and seven. Now this is where that touchdown by Marino at the end of the half changed the course of the game. They go 14-6. They go for the field goal here. Over the middle, complete the save. And he's inside the 10. Now this is where it gets dangerous for San Diego. <laughs> We're going to go back to the Ronnie Harmon missed reception. You see the out and up. Gene Atkins does an excellent job. Just gets his head around to knock this ball away at the last possible second. Then the choice on fourth down. Say runs the delay inside. Good protection. Nice pickup. First and goal from the nine. Means maybe a yard. Tim Bowens, that 317-pound rookie from Mississippi, who was named the NFL's top defensive rookie and on Dick, that tackle. Excuse me. Here's the situation. Now. You normally have your five or six best goal line plays printed out on computer. You've decided on Tuesday or Wednesday what you're going to do. And it certainly appears there's Ralph Friesen, the offensive coordinator. Their choice to this point has been to finesse Miami in this situation it has not worked another long drive time consuming but no points yet Papuna, no not there covered well by Brian Cox well deja vu all over again Aubrey Beavers check it was the man who took Papunu and it just appeared at the start of that play the Humphreys body language was saying I'm not quite sure what you want here. Well it's certainly when you've had the eight snaps in the first half inside the 10 yard line to get just field two field goals you'd certainly think to start the second half there's got to be something that they can do. This allows Don Shula to send in his dollar defense seven DBs Marco Coleman getting a breather. Ronnie Harmon the only back. They screen it to Harmon. The one. Oh my, the pressure on Bobby Ross. Yeah, he's he's got to go for it. Absolutely. Rocket hit goes in, number 34. Steve Hendrickson. Could be the game if Miami can stop them here on fourth and goal at the one. Humphreys, who has led this drive with eight completions, he had only eight the whole first half. Means with Hendrickson in front of him. Means going to get outside. Is he in? No. They stopped him just shy. Miami. Look at him come off the bench. Dick, watch, watch Coleman. Number 90 for Miami. First of all, Webster makes him go outside a little deeper. Coleman, 90, makes the hit. Today, along with the two defensive linemen, really make this play. Webster, 79, keeps Means going outside. Coleman makes the hit, but he loses control of the football. And does it hit the ground before it hits the cone? Well, it doesn't matter. It hit the pylon. The pylon is part of the end zone. And then that should be a touchback for Miami. Not so ruled. Dolphins will start at the one yard line. It would appear they should start at the 20. Hitting the backfield. That's going to be a safety if he didn't get out. No, they're going to mark it just out of the end zone. How do you do that? Parmalee, you can see him lying on the ground. Not, no, now they say say this. The linesman across the way was marking it in the field of play. Reuben Davis threw his 320 pounds into the center. And finally, the Chargers get something out of being inside the 20. Davis is able to stand up Dellenbach. Yeah, there's no question. The same rules apply to a ball coming out of the end zone as going in the end zone. It's the outside line of the goal line. So that was, in fact, the safety. Two points, and San Diego will get the ball back. So it's 21 to 8 and the free kick by the Dolphins from their own 20 yard line. 
Some momentum. Some momentum. Ruby Doobie Davis from North Carolina. He and uh, Sean Lee are now playing side by side in that defensive line. Both drafted in 88 by Tampa Bay and now happy teammates in San Diego. In the weather storm, a uh, sunshiny Sunday with heavy rains forecast for the next three days in Southern California. And uh, the Thunderbolts. Of San Diego, Reuben Davis tackling Parmalee for a safety to make it 21 to 8. And they're really icing Marino. 654 left in the third. He still has yet to get on the field. And now San Diego gets it on the free kick punt. Andre Coleman to the 45 yard line. We'll take a break here at 645 in the third. San Diego back with the ball. San Diego back with the ball, trailing 21 to 8. Have had four very long drives, keeping the ball away from Marino, but not productive. Only six points out of those drives, but they get two on the safety. Just back on a clarification, Jerry Seaman, the head of officials in the NFL, pointing out that on fourth down, you can't fumble forward down inside uh, the 10-yard uh, line. And so the ball was marked where he fumbled it at the one. And had that been a third down play at the pylon, it would have been a touchback. Rodney Culver not used that often as the setback. And the former Colt gets only a yard at that before Michael Stewart comes up from safety. Culver carried the ball only eight times all season. He makes you wonder why Means isn't in there. Uh, this is the counter play run by San Diego. Davis 73 pulls, but Stewart goes outside the blocking. And that's a critical series now for the Miami defense. They just faced a 15 play drive took one playoff and they're now back out there on the football field. Culver and Harmon with Harmon slotted right. Draw to Culver and he only gets a couple more. Flag down at the end of the play. Marco Coleman made the tackle, assisted by Larry Webster. Johnny Greer, one of the NFL's best. Face mask, number 90, defense. Five yards, repeat second down. Five yards is the inadvertent face mask. Yeah, he does. Whoa, wait a minute. That, that's pretty strong tug there. And they just give him the five yards, but he was putting a little pressure on that. Second down and two for San Diego at the Miami 46 and a half. Means still on the sidelines. Second and short. Humphreys hit from behind and down at the 48. Boy, that Marco Coleman has had a game. Coleman gets the sack again. He's on Harry Swain, the offensive left tackle. Coleman, who played for Bobby Ross at Georgia Tech here, it should be coming right at you. Coleman, who's probably improved more than anybody on that defensive line. Nice. Set him up for the outside, comes back to the inside, makes the sack. Yeah, that Coleman clan used to working well on Sunday in the Dayton, Ohio area. His dad's a Baptist minister. Third down and eight. Humphreys to the sidelines. Good catch. Sean Jefferson with the first down. Top play. Oh, we have seen some outstanding receptions on both sides. Now, when he needs it, Stan Humphreys has got a strong arm, and this is certainly an example of that. This is a long, deep out. And Jefferson comes back for the football. Frankie Smith, 29, is the man in coverage. Certainly enough for the first down. Well done. Boy, there's life in the Chargers. Time called here with five minutes exactly left in the third quarter. And the Miami Dolphins yet to get the ball on offense but for one play. And that was the safety Parmley tackled in his own end zone. We can only speculate as uh, to what this conference is all about. Was he down by contact? Perhaps was the uh, the reason for it. it. Appeared that Smith did make contact as he yes. made the dive on Jefferson. It was just kind of a touch of the sock, but there was contact. We have a first down. 
There was no down by contact on the initial player. Uh, another big plus for Sean Jefferson there. Let's see. This will be a better angle. Watch the arm. Well, maybe he did just swipe by his leg and not touch him, but uh, knowing that you can get up in the NFL, it turns it into a first down for San Diego. At the Miami 35-yard line. Humphreys missing on only one throw in the second half. All this with Means on the bench. Culver. Rodney Culver to the 30. Gain of five before Aubrey Beavers can make the stop. Culver released by the Indianapolis Colts this year and signed by San Diego as a backup. Aubrey One Beavers. of the world's most enduring symbols, the Goodyear Blimp Eagle, based in Carson, California, been providing these beautiful aerial shots so many years. 1995, in fact, marks the 70th consecutive year that a Goodyear Blimp has flown over a major sporting event. What a day to be up there above beautiful San Diego. Means returns. I guess you could say Humphreys is the ways and Natron is the means. Definitely the means. Uh, Meanwhile, Dan Marino. Marino said, when's my turn? Yeah, come on. Gentlemen, they pay me a lot of money to play, not watch. Like a cat out there in the San Diego Zoo, Marino encaged on that far sideline. Basic. Give me a chance. Come on, defense. They're going to. <laughs> well, it's always nice to see uh, some of the former announcers uh, pictured here. <laughs> I wondered who you were going to say. Well, uh, our boss is here. I had to be careful. <laughs> That's shy of a first down. Now, uh, the safety changes the mathematics of this game in an interesting way. Just thinking ahead, should San Diego have to face field goal again, then Ross could say, well, three more makes it 21 to 11. Uh, that's back onto a, you know, touchdown, touchdown field goal, 10-point yeah. game. But I think uh, he's kind of got a roll going here with the safety and the two points, and now the ball possession. This, again, is four down area. So Hendrickson comes in as the blocking back in front of Means. Means over the top for the first time. Now with Dick, there were two instances in the first half where that play would have scored in the goal line. Touchdown, not field goal. But it wouldn't have been against uh, that exact defense, would it? Now don't. Uh, Dick, I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> Come on. Forget I said it. Okay. Just go ahead. Okay. Next time they get down inside the five yard, I would suggest that play. Justifies the means, and means would justify the end. 94 yards for him today. Less than three minutes left in the third. Means again. Got a blocker. He slices. Still some discussion as to whether or not he get in the got in the end zone. Touchdown. And signal touchdown right on the goal line, and so it is confirmed. It's the counter. Davis and Jonathan 74. Watch me stay with it. First contact made. JB Brown. Again, poor tackling by Miami. Last couple of three weeks. It's cost him again. A player not wrapping up a ball carrier, and he's allowed to get in the end zone. That is an all-pro play right there. Whoa, his foot is out of bounds. Oh, his foot is out of bounds. It should have been marked at the one. Harney for the extra point. Twenty-one fifteen. Dick, his foot is way out of bounds. Next step. To the two-yard line. 
the official that called the touchdown now really wiped out by Means, who took care of most everyone on the field. We welcome you back. This crowd on its feet, celebrating the nine-point drive for San Diego. Safety, free kick, and then Natron Means taking over. He had 35 yards of that drive, even though Miami will argue that he was a couple yards shy of the 35. Carney to McDuffie. Nice move by McDuffie. Bumped out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Let's go back to the Means questionable touchdown. Uh, there's no J.B. Brown is hanging on to him. That's Solomon that hits him. And there's the right foot out of bounds. And with the Chargers' inability to get the ball in, First and goal from the two. I mean, that's why Miami's complaining so much. And the complaints are led by Tom Olivadotti when he saw it on the big board. That wasn't even close. What did they used to call that? Instant replay? Getting the chance to play on offense in this third quarter. Defense on the field. Some 12 minutes of the third. 2.34 left in the period. Moreno from his own 31. Finds an open man. First down. O.J. McDuffie. First pass in almost an hour thrown by Dan Moreno. And man, can he silence a crowd. On the road. Been a long time since a guy silences a crowd like Dan Marino. 33 seconds. Miami's Goodness. had the ball here in this quarter. Well, these two units certainly fresh. Miami offense, San Diego defense. First down at the 44. Ooh. Marino hit, gets it off to Jackson, and Jackson chopped down by Darian Gordon, just shy of midfield. O'Neal almost got to Marino that time. Uh, Jackson obviously been a big receiver today in the game plan. Watching the ball snap releases. Uh, former buddies down in Little Rock, Arkansas. Just kind of hangs around Leslie O'Neal there. And then Marino somehow gets in the ball. Pressure all over Marino. He's still able to make the completion. Yes, uh, O'Neal and Keith Jackson were members of the Sunset Tigers in Little Rock as eight and nine-year-olds. Rare run. They've not been able to move the ball well on the ground, and they're shy of the first down with Parmley carrying to the 49-yard line. O'Neill makes the stop along with Dwayne Harper. Nice little delay run here by Miami. You're going to see the guard Paul Widener gets out in front. An excellent job also of blocking by James Saxon. But San Diego defense, uh, this is the biggest third down so far today, Dick. That's where Marino has been so tough to stop. He was four for five on third downs in the first half. Four wide receivers. Bat it down. John Perella picked up when released by the Buffalo Bills. A flag is down. will get a first. No, it's against the Dolphins. The way the Charger bench jumped up, I think they thought they were called for an illegal chuck. <laughs> Bobby Ross was uh, about to leap out to the hash mark. Barella makes the, uh, he gets his hand in the air. He is an unlikely hero. Illegal hand to the face. Number 69. Offense is declined. Fourth down. Keith Sims, the left guard. He doesn't. He hasn't made many mistakes in his professional career. Here's Sims right here. Uh, it's on Perella too. Perella. I mean, it, Sims pushes him into the spot where he knocks the ball out of the air. John Kidd. Tremendously high kick that Gordon signals their catch at the 10-yard line. 38-yard punt. There's a flag down at the 50. Oh. 
So the Chargers undoubtedly, uh, rather than start at the 10, will let uh, Kidd have another chance. Sure. Kidd was released after some four years with San Diego this year as they signed uh, Brian Wagner. And uh, Kidd was around for several weeks trying out. And then he finally holding 85 offense will penalize 10 yards and re-kick. Ronnie Williams and uh, Kidd then finally replaced veteran Jim Arnold, who was cut by Shula. Yeah, they have to punt again, and they punt to Darian Gordon, one of the game's best punt returners. So another advantage here for San Diego. In fact, the uh, Chargers had the best AFC punt return record, led by Gordon's 13.2-yard average, two touchdowns. The turn is on. Another great wall kid who lives in Del Mar, inspired by the chance to come home, and this one goes into the end zone. So it amounts to a 10-yard penalty against Miami as San Diego will start from the 20 instead of from the 10-yard line. Well, with uh, the professional football season uh, growing toward the 30 here in the West on Sunday, January 22nd, the week before the Super Bowl. Four seconds left in the quarter as Humphreys trailing by six. Hands off to Culver, and Rodney Culver gets only a yard. The end of three, Miami 21, Chargers 15. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. We go to the fourth quarter. Miami or San Diego, which team will make plans for the Pittsburgh Steelers next Sunday? We open at the 21-yard line, San Diego second and nine. In that third quarter, Miami had the ball for only four plays, 21 yards. San Diego, 24 plays, 126 yards. Humphreys underneath the high. Tackled at the 26, a five-yard gain. Jesse Solomon and Michael Stewart. It'll be third and four. Uh, this is the young man, Ronnie Harmon, who creates lots of problems for lots of defenses. Uh, and his choice here is zone. Humphreys hits him. Excellent job there by the linebacker, just making sure he has no out to run. We'll, we'll give him the five or six yards. We've got to slow San Diego down here. Three wideouts, Jefferson, Martin, and... Say, say in motion. And then they give to Harmon. They crossed up Miami and had the first down. They see. gave them that pass look yes. and head off to Harmon. That's, that's right. And when Miami goes with the nickel package, there's one less linebacker in there to make the tackle. You see the four-man front. Davis does a good job of kicking out, but they're all defensive backs there. So it, it's kind of a, it, it's, it's a real problem for Miami to match up personnel right when Ronnie Harmon is in there. We call that regular Ronnie. Regular Ronnie. Now the first half it was irregular Ronnie. Now they're getting regular Ronnie functioning here. Rodney Culver. And the Dolphins stack him up after a short game. Marco Coleman again and Brian Cox. Boy, that Coleman has played some games. Yes, he has. I think he's trying to show off for his former head coach, Bobby Ross, a guy he likes a great deal, and Bobby Ross has great things to say about Marco Coleman. They thought they could run to that side, to Coleman's side, who's you know the lighter of those uh, defensive linemen, more of that stand-up defensive end uh, than a power guy. Second and eight. Culver again. It'll be third and four and a late flag thrown. And it looks like face mask against Miami. That would give a first down. Face mask. 53. Defense. Five yards. We play the second down. Uh, Dick, uh, when you looked at Don Shula, I think he's beginning to see a fatigued defense now. 53 Beavers. And he gets a hint. Oh, I couldn't really pick it out there, but nevertheless, the five yards. But uh, at that opening drive of the second half by San Diego, 15 plays. They don't score. 
put the defense back out there on the field again. They do score. They get the safety. Perhaps the key play in this entire game for San Diego is the safety. Yeah. Penalty takes it out to the 41 in the first down. And, and, and Dick, to think as poorly as San Diego played in the first half, the, the missed opportunities to be six down. Well, but they didn't play poorly. They just didn't score. Well, they they gained a lot of yards. They showed that they can move the ball. They made poor choices. All right. Missed opportunities. And to be just six points down, darn lucky. That's Culver. Out of bounds at the 46-yard line. And this is an interesting move by Bobby Ross. Culver, just a sparing contributor throughout the regular season, suddenly playing a major role in this critical game to get to the final four. Yeah, they, they've, they've inter, intermixed uh, not only Culver, but also the enemy. They've had Ronnie Harmon in the backfield trying to keep everybody fresh. This is a team that the power football team has won a lot of games in the fourth quarter. Maybe keeping means fresh for this part of the game is exactly what Bobby Ross's plan was. He's in there on second and five. <laughs> It's out of nothing, nothing there, yeah. close to the 50. It'll be third and a short two. Time Whoa. of possession, second half. Oh, oh. San Diego played the third quarter. That, that's absolutely amazing. Bobby Ross couldn't have scripted it better no. to keep it out of Marino's hands. You're right. Now, what, what we have to look for here is the beginning of poor tackling by, Mi by Miami. That's where that fatigue begins to show. Broken tackles by Means and other San Diego Chargers. Means needs just two more yards for 100. Flat down, and Means stopped short of the first down. Good defensive pursuit by the Dolphins. Running well to the ball and uh, led by number 95 Tim Bowens the rookie yeah, they were also running at Coleman but Bowens appears got he's the one that got held Dick now Cox is saying you want me to decline it it's fourth and one no I, I think they go for it fourth and one uh, yeah, they're they declining it Shula I, says make him play holding 72 offense is declined fourth down told us yesterday he said I'm going to have to take some chances oh, on no. fourth and short but not this time he said the basically defined it by inside the 50 well they're a ball shy <laughs> length shy of that uh, spot he figures now in a six point game try to pin Marino deep Wagner sends it high fair catch McDuffie at the 15-yard line. So Dan Marino will take the field with less than 11 to go on the four. Defense of the Dolphins happy to be able to get some extra air. <laughs> Marino starts at his own 14-yard line. He's been sacked once, hurried three times, three deflections, and five knockdowns, but he's been good on 19 of 27, three touchdowns today. Comes out firing to the 20 yard line. O.J. McDuffie, who has been a prime target underneath. That's his fourth catch. Harper and Seau with a stop. Again, now this Miami offense inside the 40 yard line here very conservative they're more than happy to take the quick slants they don't want the turnover here Gary Stevens a quarterback coach Bernie Kosar on the sideline Dan Marino I don't know what they're doing in situations like this. just make sure of the completion second and four Short pass to Parmalee. That looks to be good enough for a first down at the 25. His first catch. Sayo and Gibson with a tackle. San Diego Chargers third in the league in 92 when they went to the playoffs and it dropped down to 32 and then this year back to third in the league. And they could use a sack here, but the offense that Miami's using right here 
see the one sack very short short drop Marino setting and looking only at one receiver reading the defense correctly that's why he doesn't get sacked that much the uh, chain gang is a uh, got second down back at the 20 and they made what appeared to be a first down at the 25 and so the linesman calling time should be first and 10 I would think at the 25 they already marked the first down yeah the, 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 the officials have on their hand generally a rubber band that signifies what down it is I can see that the, the one guy there had it over his first finger that signifies first down when in doubt that uh, Johnny Greer doesn't have one on his hand there, there, the guy on the left hand of the guy, one rubber band around the finger. To help his, you, know, you can get ding, hit, and an official and be kind of the system you used to get home, yes. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it really gets confusing when you get down to that between three and four. <laughs> I have to stop and think for a moment. <laughs> 9.28 left. crowd screaming with all the hopes of an entire season on the line and the flag is down holding Miami holding 88 offense Jackson so first down. Who has two of the three touchdowns Miami, normally one of the least penalized in the league, they were more guilty this year than in uh, most seasons. Yeah, he kind of tackles yes, Wesley O'Neal. And that's such a critical block because it's on the point of attack. Yeah, it's hard to hook that defensive end, and that's what uh, Keith Jackson was trying to do so Parmalee could get outside as you see how penalties have increased a little bit for Miami over the years. Jackson? Wide open, and he fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by San Diego. Wait a minute, it looks like he threw it. Down. Yeah, he threw that ball. Why, I don't know. Now, they may say down, the officials threw flags and caps at the spot where Jackson went down. He's trying to lateral that to a receiver out on the sideline. Forward lateral is a live ball the same as a fumble. Ball should be San Diego's at the 40 if that's what this discussion is about. What in the world was going through Keith Jackson's head? We have an illegal forward pass by number 88 offense. When the ball hit the ground, it became an incomplete pass. We'll penalize five yards and a still Miami ball. How is that different than a fumble? What? I agree with you totally. Look, he's right here on the 30-yard line. You're going to see where the ball goes forward, and he's trying to get it to this guy out here. How can that not be ruled a fumble? I, I agree with you. It's got to be a fumble. Boy, that is a weird call. What? With a whole season on the line. That's the same as if you're tackled and you're, you give sure. up the ball. How is that any different? Sure, no question. It only cost them five yards and they keep the ball. And it's from the end of the reception. Oh, my. So it's a win-win-win for Miami. So why not do that every play? Just keep throwing the ball forward whenever in doubt. Yeah, that's just every time you're going to be tackled, just throw it forward and you only get maybe a five-yard penalty. They've got to think this one over. This this isn't, can't be right. Yeah, Jerry Seaman is here. There is an NFL observer here, and he is the top dog, Jerry Seaman. Top man. Top man. Boss Ross. And that official, Johnny Greer, is looking into the eyes of a first lieutenant of the U.S. Army, a company commander of a tank division, who wants to know how in the world can that be? Now the Chargers got a break on Means touchdown. His foot was out of bounds. You hate for him to pay this way.
But if that is the proper call interpretation, it just seems to open up such an incredible can of worms. Why would you have a ruling in the book that rewards a team for throwing the ball forward when tackled? And what was in the head of Keith Jackson to even try it? Meanwhile, there's 8.43 left. Miami leads by six. At the moment, Miami has the ball at its own 30. Unless there's an overrule here, then San Diego would get it at the 40. There's Jerry Seaman, head of officials. And since he's here, we should uh, get somebody to him, and I'd like it if John Dockery will go. A feeling though, if the official keeps going over to Bobby Ross, the way this is working, there's going to be more and more and more for Miami to pay. So it'd be second and five from the spot where they have placed it at the 30. The loss of down, it was going to be. So that what they've said is that's a first down. They made the first down, and then it's like that pass makes it second down because it was a legal forward pass Dick you're beyond me I, I don't boy this is going to be one they chew but they're going to really be chewing this one up tomorrow Marino and a rare incomplete pass although Dennis Gibson came up with the ball watch Junior say out as the motion comes, he's free to blitz. Picked up by Heller. But you're right. Whoa. Dellenbach gets him on his back, but a, a rare bad throw by Dan Marino. Third and five. Some of the old-time fans in San Diego remember another call in the, that hurt them, the holy roller call. The he Raiders yeah. slicker, slickered uh, the Chargers at the end of the game. Stabler and... Banasak and Casper. Third and five, a full rush on and a great catch, but it's shy of the first down. Irving Fryer in a crowd with Wayne Harper on his back makes the catch at the 34, where it'll be fourth down and one. Well, they tried to get this thing to the uh, first down marker. And you saw a punt. Shula wasting no time there. You know, aside from all the things that uh, is going on immediately, Don Shula, as you look into the face of this legend, who is the winningest coach in the history of the National Football League, a win today would give him 20 playoff wins and tie him for that mark, too, with Tom Landry and Bobby Beathard, who worked for Shula for several years as the director of player personnel, as they measured, seemingly is a good distance from a first down, and is. Bobby Beathard. Bobby Beathard said... The thing that I learned most from Shula and what I admire most about him is always, always positive. No matter what the condition, positive. I even said when the year that Bob Greasy broke his ankle, they went into halftime, and if you didn't know Greasy had broken his ankle, Shula State made no mention of it. There's Bobby Beathard, one of the kings of personnel in the NFL. 8.17 left and kid to punt. Gordon back at the 25. So controversial play at the moment is without meaning. And a fair catch called by Gordon. He had a lot of room to run, but played it safe at the 20. 47-yard punt. They were trailing 24-0 in the first half, and the Chargers trailing 21-6 at the half today. Maybe Jackson, who's a historian of note, was uh, thinking about his no. own forward. Uh, no, 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 please. <laughs> no, no, no. Not well, maybe not then. The 20 means the lone running back. He picks up seven on first down. J.B. Brown from the corner hit. Means, where he got to correct his total. Means now has 129 yards. How many carries does he have? 21. I say 25 and they win. Good job by Papuno hooking Coleman. Beavers inside. J.B. Brown outside. That's a nice pickup. Now that's the way you use Natron Means. You get him at those defensive backs. Soften them up. Midpoint of the 
fourth quarter in San Diego before the largest crowd in San Diego history. Means again. Driving for five and a first down at the 32. Means having a career game in this playoff. 134 yards rushing. Yeah, and before this one, uh, he did an excellent, he had his uh, personal best in Miami. Was it earlier, was it last year he had his personal best? Yeah, so yes. he's topped it today. And uh, this is the top rushing uh, game of anyone in the playoffs this year. Foster had 133 yesterday against Cleveland. Very Foster. Fake to me. Down the middle, Tony Martin, who had his problems earlier in the year, dropped a couple of short big plays against the Rams, and then is corrected, and then he has been hot the last month. Of course, his mom, who lives down in Miami, Sarah, went to the grocery store with lightning bolts on this week, and there was almost a, there was almost a, riot. a, a riot down there. So she's quietly sitting inside her house with the shades drawn, rooting for the San Diego Chargers. Yes, yeah, Sarah, you bet she's cheering. First down after the 14-yard throw. 6.05 left, Humphreys. Short to Mark Say at the 50-yard line. It'll be second and five. Doc, have you been able to uh, straighten out the puzzle of that call? You know, Dick, I just talked to Jerry Seaman, the head of officials, and he told me it was simply this. It's an illegal forward pass, and he compared it to a quarterback running beyond the line of scrimmage and throwing the ball. It's a five-yard penalty, loss of down. You know, it's a very bizarre play, but he said it was called correctly by the officials. Illegal forward pass, loss of down, five-yard penalty. Back to you, Dick. Oh, I, I don't I, That sounds like a cover. Down the middle and complete to tight end Dwayne Young. But well, there was no receivers ahead to throw to no. for Jackson, who was not a quarterback out of that field. And that's really a, a rare interpretation, but so it is. Uh, that's a tight end down the middle here, almost able to make the completion. Can't quite stretch his arm out enough, Dave, Dwayne Young, to make that catch. <laughs> well, that's uh, yeah, taking see, a big bite. That's what happens to tight ends. You know, they always got dirt in their face. Third and five, Harmon in the backfield. Blitz. They pick up the blitz, deflected, and oh. passes it. First down. Check it. It's Tony Martin at the 36-yard line. Oh, the talk about bizarre. What are the odds on that one? Yeah. That ball was 25 feet in the air and deflected. And, Dick, if Miami doesn't blitz, there are people here to make the catch, the interception. But because they're committed to the line of scrimmage, Martin's really the only one that can make the catch. Oh, my. First down at the 37. Looked like 21 off, 15. Looked like off of the hand of Brian Cox. He was the man, one of the many putting pressure on Humphreys. A break for the Chargers. Clock is under five minutes. Means is back. Humphreys pumps. He's going long. Jefferson. No, out of bounds. He only got one foot in. Oh, was that close? Do we want to see this on replay? <laughs> I'm asking you now. We're going to see it. A good pump bait by Stan Humphreys. Ball is caught well by Jefferson. One, One two. two. Oops. Oops. Boy, Again, the Charger fans see this one on the replay. Control. One down, two down. Oh. Wonder what the uh, excuse will be this time. Oh, it just showed on the big screen. That was a go-ahead touchdown, did I? Second and ten. Well, it's, it's a shame these officials have had a bad game today. Both ways. Humphrey says somebody get open. They're saying broken up and intercepted by Stewart. Michael Stewart at the 24-yard line. So one minute, a touchdown that wasn't, and the next Miami gets it back. This is intended to be a screen. Natron means is the screen man. It's not open. So Stan Humphreys tries to improvise. He makes the big mistake. Late down the middle. Stewart picks it off. But it was Troy Vincent who made the play. Deflected the ball. 
all the highs and lows and two successive plays. An almost touchdown and then an interception. Here's the almost. Control and both feet in. Ball is the answer. Yeah, he caught it with one foot down and then got the other one in. That's a touchdown. Next call. I mean, that happens. Sure. Boom, boom. No question about that. Michael Stewart off the deflection by Troy Vincent with the interception. And Marino comes out throwing, and he's going long. Too long for Irving Fryer. Well, this is a, a sensational athletic play by Vincent. And Tony Martin is just an outlet. This is a, a screen designed to the other side of the, the field, and Vincent gets his hand up there. Stewart makes the interception. Dick, I've heard the, the arguments against instant replay, that in a three-dimensional world, it's hard to call from a screen things that are two-dimensional. But can you deny that there are instances where instant replay works perfectly? Well, sometimes it did. Sometimes. Second and ten. Moreno takes the short route, and Dennis Gibson, who labored in uh, Detroit for many years before coming here as a free agent, makes the tackle. Harmony, the receiver. Uh, if we go back to the interception, Humphreys knows the mistake he made. Uh, the only thing he could do there was turn the ball over. Everything else was working fine. He just didn't throw it far enough inside, and Vincent made a heck of a play. Big third down now. Third and seven. Two turnovers by Miami. No takeaways by San Diego. And if you that, that's one of the big statistics. Blitz. And he had to throw it away. Didn't have time to really find an open man as Chris Mims, as he started the game pressuring, Marino gets to him and hurries him. You're going to see say out comes you see a late guy come here. They put as much pressure on Marino as they possibly could. Uh, it's 29 Carrington coming. He had to get rid of it. Mims made him shorten his arm a little bit. Aaron Carrington putting the pressure on. He says, boy, I want to win for my mom's 50th birthday watching in Atlanta. Kid to punt. Another high kick. Gordon. On his return, this one. 26. Reverse. Here's yeah, Paul. Oh, they got it set up. 30. And a good play made on the far side by number 35, Michael Stewart, who just had the interception. Stewart on the special teams as well denies the Chargers on a little razzle dazzle on that punt return. Great discipline by Stewart to stay there when the tendency is to go after the ball. He's been uh, desperate throughout this year, battling that ache of the Achilles, leading his team this far, leading by six, but Humphreys has the ball at the 39. 3.15 to go. Ronnie Harmon to the 49. It'll be close to a first down. J.B. Brown wraps him up. Dick, I can tell you, this Miami defense has faced an awful lot of plays in this second half. At, at some point, it's always more difficult. It, it, it's more fatiguing to play defense than it is offense because you have to pursue on defense. At some point, you wonder if this defense is just out of the, all of its collective energy. That's a good point, Bob, too, and that the bye week allows that offense to put in Absolutely. some extra sure. work. Means now the running back, second and one. Boy, he barely got the handoff and has the first down at the Miami 49. 2.27 left. And Bowen, Bowen's made the tackle there. I would suggest running the corner. Now the two games, six interceptions, no touchdowns for Stan Humphreys. That counted. <laughs> first down at the 49 as they approach the two-minute timeout. Freeze pumping. Throws to the sidelines. Tony Martin came back to meet his quarterback. First down at the Miami 39 at the two-minute timeout. Oh, that's a big double. He catches it and for the first down. Well, it's going to be close to a first down. It's right at the sticks. Beat her down. We'll be back. 21-15.
a record crowd of 63,381 from the Goodyear Blimp Eagle. Providing these aerial pictures, Goodyear Blimps travel over 100,000 miles every year covering major sporting events. It was a first down throw to Martin and just inside the Miami 39. immediately by Michael Stewart after a six yard game and boy Michael Stewart was right on him Michael Stewart ever even cheated up to the line of scrimmage so he could have a better chance to cover Ronnie Harmon as San Diego was right back to the line of scrimmage half dozen catches for Harmon 50 yards total second and four incomplete that stops the clock with 129 left Papunu the target well, there are a couple of things going on here. One for San Diego. Should they score, if they score quickly, Marino gets his chance to bring Miami back. Mm. And the other thing they don't want is first and goal at the five. That was a problem. <laughs> Let, let's try from here, gentlemen. Third and four. Humphreys now has thrown 40. sideline for the play call I think Bobby Ross well, is running. I think Stan's already got these plays they've practiced this and practiced this a lot they have all their timeouts left Harmon knocked out of bounds at the 10 stops the clock 59 seconds left the Chargers are 10 yards from taking the lead now, see they had Solomon in coverage on Ronnie Harmon and immediately you got to look to Ronnie Harmon. Now this was the play two plays ago. That's the slant. And then the good release here by Martin Good Speed Troy Vincent too soft in coverage. Stewart has to make the stop. It's second down and uh, about a yard and a half. To the eight yard line be right. close to a measurement there we go again a reminder as this game has gone into prime time for those of you watching in the east a reminder that after the game most of these stations an all new earth two and then an all new sequest three tight ends h backs they got a whole bunch of meat up in front of them a tough little movie made at the line of scrimmage as he goes to 140 yards for the day a charger record for playoffs is 25 that was his 24th you said 25, 25. games and you thought the frustration for Shula is he just hasn't gotten a chance to play fairly in the second half he's not had the ball you're absolutely correct the uh, opening drive by San Diego 15 plays they don't score the safety the defense got worn out there. Marino hasn't he hasn't broken a sweat in the second half. And the worst thing should San Diego score is that they are chewing up time. So if Miami has to rally they won't have too many ticks left. Forty eight seconds. San Diego has had the ball thirty nine minutes Miami twenty minutes in this game. And yet the Dolphins lead. Uh, this has been so exciting. He got Shula up out of his, uh, his little cart there. He's thinking about it. We get the ball. We got our timeouts. Now use them. Marino and Shula, they've been uh, in this football marriage for 12 years. And what's been interesting. Because of the measurement for the first down, San Diego will not be charged with a timeout. <laughs> well, first and goal and two timeouts left for the Chargers. What will the Chargers call here? Three wides. Humphreys. Wide open. Touchdown. Mark
if Miami has any special point after block play, this is the time. David Ben to snap, Gil Gilbert to hold, Carney to give the Chargers the lead. for Marino to get his team in field goal range. Dick, a beautiful call here. You're going to see Say come in motion, get lost, and come right up through the middle of the defense. He goes that way, comes back the other way, totally lost on the rollout. No one out there to cover Mark Say. Finally. There's another gunslinger left in town. One would think that Carney will not take a chance on a long return, that this will be some form of a short low kick. San Diego today with 467 Good. total yards. Irving Spikes and O.J. McCuffey are the deep men. goes Ronnie Williams, the tight end, at the 38-yard line. Oh, God, now, look, you're going to start Marino at the 38? With 32 you're just, seconds. You're just doing him a favor. Now, Stojanovic, the field goal kicker for Miami, one of the best from long range. He's kicked one from 50 this year. And coming into this season, Stojanovic has kicked 11 for 22 outside the 50. 11 for 22. So anything close to the 35-yard line of San Diego, and Miami's hopes are very much alive. completed pass, but uh, obviously Fryer didn't have possession. You see the smoke from the cannon clouding Shula. Marino did a good bit of running to get open. Whoa, wait a minute. He, he was down. I'm not sure I wouldn't call that a catch. Well, there was a hesitation. But it's ruled an incomplete pass. I, I don't I can't remember a game where we've had more instances where I thought Gee, if somebody could take another look at that play. Well, Mike Dick and Joe Gibbs agree with you. Marino trying to get Stojanovic close. He's changing his play. Goes deep. Oh. Incomplete. The fly down. As Scott Miller, number 83, hit by Eric Cassett. Pass incomplete. They'll mark this off, unless they call that interference. If that's interference, the ball's at the 30-yard line already. Why, well, something burning down below us here. That's no longer the cannon. I don't know if somebody's uh, barbecuing early here, but I think that's a very good call. Castle was there before the ball was. This is an excellent call. Pass interference. Defense. First down. Well, they're already 47 yards from a field goal. Contact. I don't think there's any question. That, that's an easy call. 32-yard penalty. Well, the officials certainly have been a big part of this game. Yes, they have. Probably more than they want. Right. No, I'm sure they'd be the first yeah. to say that. So, Pete Stojanovic knows he's going to get a chance to win it. You want to talk about pressure. They don't see much duty, but... So often it's with all the hopes of a team and a city and all the fans on the line, and that's where Stojanovic is going to be. If they kick it right now, it would be about 47 yards. Interesting thing about Stojanovic at Miami, he practices on uh, uprights that are eight feet apart. The uh, hash marks and the uprights are the same at 18 and a half feet, so he only gives himself eight. Now this is the stuff that legends are made of. No matter how you get it done, Marino throws it down there. Well, 32-yard penalty puts Miami in position to win. But uh, Marino wants them closer. 
Blitz. Batted in the air. Almost intercepted. Oh, Junior Seau had a beat on that one. Intended for Mike Williams. 12 seconds. And here's Seau right here. He, he fakes the blitz. Look at the ground he covers here trying to make this interception. Can't quite get there. Darian Gordon made the play. 12 seconds. This probably the last play, and it's a matter of where do you want to kick it from, Stojanovic? Right hash mark or left hash mark? Although he's in shotgun, could be a handoff. Well, he's going to go for it all to Williams, incomplete. Boy, you got to head it to Miami. So it's six seconds, and now's the time. Here comes Stojanovic with uh, a timeout remaining for San Diego. One would guess that uh, Ross will wait till they set up and and then try to ice the kicker. Snapper is Dellenbach. The holder is John Kidd. And in the meantime, on the other sideline, one young man, Eric Castle, the 24-year-old defensive back from Oregon for San Diego, has to be rooting for someone to make a play because his 32-yard penalty has given Miami this chance. Kickers don't have friends until after the kick. And they either go away or you got lots of friends. He's kicked them from 58 successfully and a 59 yarder in his six year career. And it all comes down to this. Stoyanovic makes it's Miami at Pittsburgh next Sunday. And if he's denied it's the Chargers going to the Steel City. The holder is Kidd. The X Charger, it'll be 48 yards. Psychological pump for San Diego, no, and they already beat next week's opponent this year. 57 year old Bobby Ross did not get a vote for coach of the year. Just a formality of a successful snap for the Chargers, and this town will celebrate the uh, biggest win in a couple of decades. Was there anything missing in this game, Dick? And now they can shoot. <laughs> and in a rare game, the safety is the difference in victory, John. Uh, it's unbelievable right now. It really is. Uh, you know, our defense came out the second half and held them to no points. Offensively, we were moving the ball in the first half. We just couldn't get it in the end zone. We were stopping ourselves. But I tell you what, it feels great right now. I'm just happy. What was the difference in the second half? We just made the plays when they were there. We were running the football, uh, and we made some key fourth down uh, passing plays that kept the chains moving. Congratulations. What about Pittsburgh next week? It's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a real tough game. But 
I'll think about them tomorrow. I'm just happy right now. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. And so a season ends for one team. And for Dan Marino, was it the season where he finally get back with a chance at a Super Bowl ring? But the Chargers in the second half kept the ball away. But even at that, here's the snap that is high. Kid gets it down. But Stoyanovich was wide right all the way. Uh, Dick Dillenbach, the center, the snapper, normally very good. And that is a rare mistake by the snapper. Kid does a great job, but you're right. The distraction when Stoyanovich sees Kid rise up, all of a sudden something's wrong. He'll blame himself, but it's uh, yes. it's more complicated than that. It's the snap. But Don Shula denied a chance to go to the AFC final with the hopes of playing the Super Bowl on his home turf. Joe Robbie and Dan Marino, brilliant the first half when he had a chance to play. Three touchdown passes. But the Chargers wouldn't let him have the ball in the second half. And Stan Humphreys, who has thrown only one touchdown and two playoff opportunities, gets the one that wins today. And Bobby Ross, one of the one of the he'll hide in the shadows, would be the last one to say, hey, I, I did a good job. The boy will he enjoy that glass of soda pop tonight. New Earth 2, then a prehistoric crocodile threatens the ship on Sequest, followed by the network television premiere of Ricochet. West Coast viewers can see these shows at their regularly scheduled times. For Bob Trumpy, John Dockery, I'm Dick Emberg saying so long from Jack Murphy Stadium. This has been a presentation. NBC Sports, our 30th year covering the NFL.